So now we go to a fun story that is surprisingly coming from Forbes.com, but from Eric Mack, contributor to Forbes. A real-world Star Trek replicator is now possible thanks to a new breakthrough. And I've been telling you about this. I said it. I said I was saying this with Adam vs. the Man in 2013. 3D printing is a thing. Molecular 3D printing has got to be just around the corner. It's just a matter of time. But the thing is, there's there's one really more exciting step to this that you can just you can already envision this. Because there's a convergence of technologies occurring here, right? It's not just 3D printing. There are the elements of 3D design that go into this. What we're going to have, so I'll get into the story. A startup with alumni from MIT and Yale says it's made a breakthrough in creating a next generation material that should make it possible to 3D print literally anything out of thin air. New York based Mattershift, it's a cool name for a company like this, has managed to create large scale carbon nanotube membranes that are able to combine and separate individual molecules. As founder and CEO of Mattershift, Rob McGinnis said, quote, this technology gives us a level of control over the material that we've never had before. For example, right now we're working to remove CO2 from the air and turn it into fuels. This has already been done using conventional technology, but it's been too expensive to be practical. Using our tech, I think we'll be able to produce carbon zero gasoline, diesel, and jet fuels that are cheaper than fossil fuels. Now, I never predicted this part of it, although I saw this uh, somewhat coming with uh, w when I first started getting into to 3D printing uh, as, as a hobbyist in, in 2013, that there was a device that you could feed in plastic bottles and it would churn out the plastic spools to be 3D printed into whatever designs you could have. And even then, people were looking at the pollution in the air going, how do we pull it out of the air and put it into a usable form? I didn't realize that that was going to be happening through this same technology, this molecular level 3D printing. CNTs have been identified as holding promise for a number of potential applications from better golf clubs, fuels, and medicines to far out concepts like space elevators. A study published this week in the journal Science Advances confirms that matter shifts large CNT membranes perform as well as the small prototypes we've seen so far. The company says their breakthrough brings down the difficulty and cost manufa of manufacturing the material, which should allow the technology to burst out of the confines of university labs. Back to McGinnis, quote, it should be possible to combine different types of our CMT membranes in a machine that does what molecular factories have long been predicted to do, to make anything we need from basic molecular building blocks. We're talking about printing matter from the air. Imagine having one of these devices with you on Mars. You could print food, fuels, building materials, and medicines from the atmosphere and soil, or recycled parts without having to transport them from Earth. Are you guys starting to see the picture? Like, and, and I, 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 I actually just doing man on the street videos today. I ended up as a fun sort of follow on conversation to someone who was skeptical about political progress, explaining them to them the, the, the exponential nature of human growth, human progress in, in driven by technology at this point. And if you just observe reality, look at the amount of change society has gone through over the last 10 years. And you can go back and say, you know what, that's probably about the same amount of change as humanity experienced over the 100 years before that. And then it's really not much of a stretch if you think back to see that the change that humanity has experienced over the last 100 years is equivalent to something on the scale of the change that we experienced over the last 1,000 years. Which means that the change of the last 10 years is going to happen in about a year. And then that amount of change is going to be happening on the scale of months and weeks and days and hours. That's what exponential means. 
and I don't have to show you a chart to just put the idea in your head to compare these phases, the last 10 years, the last 100 years, the last 1,000 years versus the last 100,000 years of human progress. It's really easy to see that change accelerates in some form of exponential way, which means this 3D printing technology is about, in historical terms, the blink of an eye to be practical, to be useful for you as an individual. You are going to have that Star Trek replicator in your home. Now, maybe it's a few years time before this, even what we're talking about in this article becomes practical. And then maybe a few years time before they're able to, to print 3D, 3D print food at the molecular level. By the way, the implications for this are just literally unfathomable. We're going to be 3D printing rocket ships in our backyards to populate the cosmos with the technology that's going to allow us to feed ourselves filet mignon as much as we want by harvesting asteroids. Like that, that, that's, and that's conservative. That's what my little freaking brain can come up with. Now, I'm not the first to look at these things, and I'm, I'm certainly not anywhere special with my predictions and foresight. But... In a minute, I'll share with you my one, I think, particularly unique fantasy that, that I know has to be possible soon. A molecular factory is a long predicted technology that, in theory, should be able to accomplish some of what the replicator from Star Trek does, although not nearly as cleanly as on the show. Not yet. Mattershift's approach is more about separating and combining molecules to form new raw materials, which is why working on creating fuels is a logical place to start. But, as McGinnis points out, if it works well, there's no reason that more complex molecular factories can't, by combine, can't be combined to become the future of manufacturing and, yes, maybe eventually serve up a drink out of thin air at some point by simply asking a future version of Alexa for tea, Earl Grey, hot. Okay, so I, I think that fantasy of being able to, to talk to a computer or a, a, a version of Alexa or a 3D printer that has voice control. Because obviously, you see, these technologies are synergistic. It's not just that you're going to be able to download something from the internet and 3D print it with whatever you want. It's, you're just going to be able to say, print this. Computer, make it happen. And it happens. We already have, I mean, even in our cell phones, we have that technology to be able to communicate verbally with machines. So here's my big fantasy. Because to me, I see this as the, the, the true mark of humanity having just, I don't know, in some form, transcended the physical realm. And, and I'm not even talking about the crazy stuff. Like you could eventually 3D print an individual brain cell and, and have a, a you know, nano device that goes in your brain and rebuilds and makes you smart. I mean, yeah rebuild the biological computer of the brain, put it in a robot. I don't know, maybe all of that's coming, but you can predict the convergence of the technologies we already have. And there are already better brain computer interfaces where we have computers reading our thoughts now. That's right, you have computers that are in it, they're again, very primitive, able to tease out from your thoughts the words that you are thinking of. They are now able to create images even of thoughts in your head from scanning your brain. It's not going to be long till that computer is one way or another directly connected to your head, maybe in a contact lens, maybe in an earpiece, maybe embedded in your skull, maybe something like that. And when it comes to the transhumanist thing, I'm really all, I'm all for it. I will be the second person in line to get all of those new technologies embedded in my body. Not the first. I don't, I don't mean literally the second, obviously, but second wave, whatever. I want to be there. I want this to happen. So it won't be long before this 3D printing technology at the molecular level, where they're literally able to create anything they want out of thin air, is going to be so efficient and so small that it will fit on your fingertip. And that device connected to your fingertip, or maybe the end of your robot arm at this point, I don't know, but you are going to have a device, hypothetically, it's only, you put it on your freaking fingertip that is connected to a computer in your brain that will literally allow you to zap into existence whatever the fuck you can think of. Yeah, we're all about to be wizards. 
And people are, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I get so excited about this because it puts all the petty shit that we're dealing with now in perspective. We still live in a world where humans are pointing guns at each other in the name of government. Are you fucking kidding me? We're about to be wizards. Can we all just get along? Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.